The only problem with that, uh, when I actually did arrive in Leeton, or on my way here, I should say, is that there was a couple of different places that have heritage in them and one GPS, I was actually using two GPSs. Right. So if you want directness and focus and making sure that you are going to get to the right location, mm. maybe there's a couple of factors that you bring in mm. and that's exactly what I did. Mm. So, um, you know, I used the, the different tools that I had mm. and I um, made ensure that I um, did get to actually that destination. And as a backup, because I had those two versions, I got on the phone, made sure the address and then uh, made that happen. And I got there um, because I was, you know, run, uh, chances are I may have not made it to the location um, at, at a certain time. So it's important to realize these things and to use all the tools that are necessary. I guess in life, you know, we talk about using coaches, Tony, to help us along that path, to really narrow that focus in that you are working on your mindset in the best way, that you are setting that GPS or yourself personally. Yeah, oh, look, you know, obviously I'm going to say, yes, use a coach. Um, there's a good one over there. There's a sign up there. Uh, but you don't have to, right? So the reality is that you don't have to go and engage a coach. But we have you, a don't, you don't have to do anything. Right. You, don't have, you don't have to do anything, right? Right, but you could, if you want to, instead of going down the path of paying for a coach, get an accountability buddy, right? So get someone to hold you to account. You know, we do this from a sometimes from a gym point of view, or from an exercise point of view. Have an accountability buddy, right? It might be a life partner, it just might be a good friend. But what I'll challenge you on with those accountability buddies is make sure that they're the right accountability buddy for you. That is, are they going to be direct with you? Are you going to be direct with them? That is in your language, or are you going to fluff around and go, yeah? I think you're doing a good job. Yeah, pat on the back. Yeah, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I'm just going to molly coddle you along and, and, you know, and just help you out when you're actually not being a good friend. You're actually not being a good friend if you're not being direct. If you're heading someone down a path that is in the totally the wrong direction, that's not being a good friend at all. So if you're going to be accountability buddy, it comes with a lot of responsibility and you need to be direct in your language and you need to encourage and be open to and welcome direct feedback uh, back in your direction. So it's calling a spade a spade. It's, you know, putting in those, subtle, you know, challenges to people. Yep. It is, um, you know, challenging the status quo. It is uh, thinking outside the box for them or allowing them to think outside the box for their own little comfort zones as well. So it's many of those things, Tony. We've got a couple of comments that have come through. Yep. Sean says, was about to quit very soon anyway, but I was waiting till after my nan's funeral so I could address it with the boss calmly. So interesting ideas and of, often these things that come off, um, even though it seems like Sean was really direct with what he wanted and it, it happened as a result. Now he didn't instigate that. And maybe, you know, maybe subconsciously it did, Tony. I've had this happen to me before mm -hmm. where I thought I was leaving, I was gonna leave in the next six months. It happened in only a month mm -hmm. because I sort of wished my way out and forced my way out subconsciously before having a conscious state around it. Mm. So um, Kelly on the back of that says, I got fired too, but I'm looking at it as a positive opportunity to focus on property development and the rest of the relaxation and realign uh, my goals to, um, to, do, to do next. So really good to see that. You know, what, what's some ideas that you have around that, Tony? Well, the ideas are that if, if you get fired, clearly that's unfortunate, but uh, it is what it is in the sense of that it's happened, it's behind you, it's in the past, it's in the rear view. No point dwelling on it. Uh, you know, I say look back for three reasons. Look back to uh, take the lesson, uh, look back to uh, enjoy a happy moment and look back to see how far you've grown. So other than that, keep looking forward. So take the lesson from it, whatever it was, uh, guys, uh, Kelly, Sean, uh, you know, take that lesson and, and move forward. But now it's a time to, as Kelly's rightfully said, what is it that you truly, truly, truly want? What, how do you want to be spending your days? Like what type of job do you want next? You said you want to focus on your property development. That's awesome, right? So get out there and make that happen, but get clear on the things that you want. So when you say, hey, I want to focus on property development, and I'm sure you've got it tighter than this, Kelly, but this is just for generally for everybody. It's actually, that's about that wide, right? So it's about vroom, like really narrow in what is it that you truly want to be doing? What are you going to be focusing on specifically? What are the goals for you guys, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, yes, it's happened. Yes, some may see it as unfortunate. Others may be, uh, it might be, oh, thank God that happened. Uh, either way, it's in the rearview mirror. And so there's nothing 
that we can do about that moment. And so, but far too many people, Luke, get caught up in dwelling on the things that have happened. And it doesn't need to be a firing. It could be a piece of adversity, a bit of a challenge. Uh, something hasn't quite gone their way and they fixate on that thing. And by defini definition, when you look at that thing, you are looking backwards. You are not looking forward. So how do you look forwards? We well, want to become solution oriented, right? And how do I become solution oriented? Well, I ask great questions. I ask great questions that are forward facing questions, the who's, the what's, the where, the when's, the why's, right? What have I got to do to keep moving forward? Because I've had a little blip in my direction. I thought my journey from point A to point B was going to be a straight line. Unfortunately, it doesn't kind of work that way. And so it's about, well, I've had a little blip. I've gone off track, but what have I got to do to get back on track? What are the next things that I can be doing? Absolutely. And uh, I think it seems like this one was kind of a meant to be thing, Tony, as well. Like they've actually set their direction or they, and it was kind of like, well, that actually happened and maybe a little bit sooner than they thought, but it did happen as a result. Like Tony says, be careful what you wish for um, it, because of the power of thought. So yeah. that was, is what is basically eventuated out of that. So really good comment there from Tony Gallagher. Well done. Um, he also says, I remember when Sean and Kelly said they were wondering when and how, to jump into property development so you know then you know thoughts become things tony and this is what we talk about a lot and this is a direct a direct direct example of this actually happening for people where they actually think about it um and they're quite direct in their thoughts they're probably not quite direct in their actions yeah, so, so the universe has now said, righto, guys, well, let's see see what you're made of. So uh, you want to do full-time property development? Well, we're going to make that happen for you. You've both been fired uh, within a couple of uh, days, I'm assuming, for totally non-related things. But, uh, but nonetheless, it's happened. And so it's about, okay, well, now is, is this really what you, you want? You've talked about wanting to be full-time property developers. Is now the right time for you? And maybe it's not, right? I don't know. Everyone's circumstances are different, but you've certainly talked about it. A lot I've not spoken to either of you directly, but certainly just through comments on different uh, channels that I've seen, uh, different you know, lives, et cetera. So is now the time? Now is the time. You know, um, it's, uh, you now got your opportunity. So I'm, I'm excited for you. Interesting from uh, Tony, um, he said uh, that um, good recall from, from Sean to Tony's comments. That was almost a year ago, um, started from July last year. So well done to Tony Gallagher for picking that up and really being present in uh, the discussion over a year ago. So I know we're interacting at different times and I don't specifically maybe remember some of those things, but Tony's picked that up really well. My second point that I want to talk about today, Tony, is are you direct with others? Are you with um, clear and concise words? I mentioned that a little bit earlier in the questioning, really shortening the focus for someone who is maybe a little bit lost, a little bit hazy in what they're thinking and what they're feeling at the time. Mm. So making it really specific for someone, making it very direct in your questioning or in your delivery can really help someone. So being clear and concise and having clarity for them who, you, who you're dealing with as well. Yeah, it's also about recognising the person at the other end as well. So having a little bit of EQ, emotional intelligence about this, because sometimes people uh, can't handle directness. And so you have to do it in a way that you believe is going to get the message through because you could be incredibly direct with someone uh, and it may just fall flat and it may have the opposite effect of the intention that you had. You may have had the most purest of intentions directness has caused uh, caused an issue so it's about working through and understanding who is the person that you're dealing with and how can I get my message through and sometimes I need to get my message through it's not that it's being indirect but I'm just doing it in a slightly different way still being direct with my message but there can be the the shortest possible route to to get there or I may just go down a few back streets but still come back to where I need to get to. But that's also about recognising the people that you're dealing with. Don't just take a one size fits all and go, well, Tony and Luke talked about being direct and I'm going to spend the next week being direct with everyone because you may actually come back here in a week's time and say, actually, no, no one wants to talk to me anymore. So it's about recognising that, um, you know, and even for me, right? So I am very direct with people, but I will adjust and adapt the way in which I'm direct to clients based on my knowledge of them. And for some others, for some, sorry, uh, they are open to just give it to me straight between the eyes. 
And there are others that it just takes a little bit more uh, coercion, influence, persuasion uh, to get the message through. And either way, I'm fine with it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I guess in, in what we're saying, so Kelly quickly said, sometimes you plan things, but and there is, there was a process that I was going to do first before I left work by writing our task list for the new person, but they didn't happen because I got fired before I could completed the task list. So you good to see that they set out what's going to happen and then the boss stepped in and made it happen as well so you know i just want to really reflect on that um moving on to the third point tony is where is there improvement needed and what can you do this is you know thinking about directness and what we're all about what are these things that we need to be doing well we talk about it every week we talk about these magic questions i hope that those regulars know them inside out upside down uh, backwards, frontwards, whatever, because truly that's it. <clears throat> and it all comes down to awareness. It comes down to self-awareness, Luke. The big problem is people don't have self-awareness. They think they have awareness. They don't really have awareness. And so you've got to spend time reflecting on yourself. To better understand yourself, you first have to allocate time to better understand yourself. And there's two magical questions. And the first one is, what went well? And the next one is, what can I do different? And, you know, the what went well is around gratitude. It's around thinking about the great things that are going on in your world. In fact, I spent time with a couple of regular, uh, sorry, new clients earlier this week, uh, one in particular, and we focused for uh, a large part of our session on being grateful, on just being grateful, on just starting to change the way we view the world. Because here's the thing, if I want to focus on negativity and pessimism, and things that are not going well, then I will see them absolutely everywhere. But if I want to focus on positivity and optimism and things that are going well, I'll see them everywhere, right? So it's about being grateful. But the other thing is around then, what can I do different? That's the second question, right? And so as part of my awareness, it's what are the things that I can do different? In regards to the directness of what I'm doing, start to ask yourself a question around, you know, can I be more direct with my conversation? Reflect on a conversation that you had. Can I make improvements? Can I tighten it up? Can I be more succinct? Whatever it might be. Did it have the effect that I was looking for with that particular person? Maybe it totally missed the mark. What could I do different next time? How could I reframe that so that person gets my intention? Maybe my intention didn't come across in the things that actually came out of my mouth. And so how could I reframe that? But again, it's about what can I do different? Not what went wrong? What did I fail at? What mistake did I make? No, no, no. What can I do different? So tomorrow, when my feet hit the floor, when I bound out of bed, what are the new things that I'm going to adopt to ensure that tomorrow is a better day than and today was? Yeah, and directness is, is a big thing that we can then have that narrow that focus, which we've been talking about today. Really super session, Tony, today of being direct, direct with ourselves, direct with others, and really being specific about what we want and what we're doing. And, you know, maybe you can help along the way by being that little bit more direct and not being like airy fairy about things. So guys, hopefully that's helped today to think about what your path, what your journey is and having that uh, real good focus, real good directness. Tony, thank you. Good, great, great session. We love popping it up. Uh, Sean just says, been watching Joe Dispenza series on um, Gia, Gia um, and in the gratitude and appreciation and focus. Mm -hmm. So I probably put those words incorrectly, but hey, uh, Joe Dispenza does some amazing works on that. Um, and it's great to reflect on these things today about being direct. Get out there. Have a great week. See you next Sunday. Bye, guys. Right. See ya. Bye for Bye. now.